Welcome to Inside Fordham Basketball, presented by TD Bank, where we dive into the Fordham men's basketball program in the first season under head coach Kyle Neptune. I'm your host, Nick DeLuca. In this inside look, we recap Fordham's non-conference schedule with Coach Neptune. Chat with Fordham forward Chuba Ohams about his career in the Bronx. And Coach Neptune sits down with Fordham alum and radio voice of the Brooklyn Nets, Chris Carino. Fordham graduate forward Chuba Ohams has played parts of six seasons with the Rams, and he's saving his best for last. Ohams is averaging a double-double. He's a top-10 rebounder in the entire country, and he recorded the first 20.20 rebound performance by a Fordham player since 2000. He's showing why Kyle Neptune called him one of the best big men that he's ever coached and why his top priority after taking the Fordham job was to get Chuba Ohams to remain at Rose Hill. Here's the Fordham big man on what it's like playing in his hometown, the impact that Kyle Neptune and his staff have had on the entire team, and the mindset heading into his final year coming off a significant knee injury. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. I grew up in the Bronx, so it's been amazing. I mean, every, literally every game I've played, I can link it to the crowd and see somebody from my neighborhood or my family. And in fact, this gave me the opportunity, this gave the opportunity for my mom and dad to see me play for the first time ever. I mean, the Bronx is tough. I mean, I grew up in a tough neighborhood. I mean, we're definitely playing like we're a Bronx team. And, I, and it's, it's been really, it's been going pretty well. That, that, was, that was one of the main things that this coaching staff came to instill in us, just to play with great play with toughness, regardless of the outcome at the end of the day. And it's been, it's been, it's been showing. That this coaching staff has been amazing. They've pushed me day after day after day. So it'll be like maybe like Ron come see me for film and Trey come see me for film. Ergo pushing you to do this and that. Coach Neptune, I can go all the way down the list. Those guys have been amazing. The fact that I mean they just they, they regardless of the outcome, they always instill us just to be tough, be that gritty, be just just to be that team, to be in units. We are definitely obviously want to win every game. They, they're not only trying to instill in us to be a gritty team, but it also goes to the off the court. They want us to be great men off the court. They always talk about us being legit, and they always they want us to be the best men we can um, going forward outside of Fordham basketball. We're at, we're at the end of the day, we're at Fordham University, a very prestigious academic school. I think they push us all the time. We have a lot. We have study all basically every day. So I mean, they instill us to get on our academics as much as we're working hard on the basketball court. I'm in my master. I'm in my masters. I'm working on media management masters. Not only staff, especially Kyle Neptune. I mean, he's he pushed me to be all around, all around player from inside and out. Being a mismatch nightmare, being a person that can guard multiple positions, stuff like that, and just being a gritty guy. So, I'm, I'm, I've just been playing like like you, like you said, it's my last year. I've been just playing as hard as I can. Uh, whatever I could do to help this team win, that's been my, my that's been my main focus going 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 into this year and throughout this year. That was like my racial junior year I got injured, so um, it was tough. Especially because when once going once I knew I had to get surgery, I mean I remember they told me that it would take the rehab um, rehabilitation process would take nine to twelve months. So just because of COVID it pushed everything back. So I I tried to work tirelessly. I wanted to come back so so bad last year to help my teammates and I couldn't I only could come back for that last game and I still wasn't even hundred percent. I was just trying to push myself but like I said, it was it was tough. I mean, it definitely made me mentally mentally tough. It definitely that's one thing. I mean, it has its pros and cons. Like I said, it made me mentally tough. I mean, and I got to learn just being off the court. I mean, I got to just watching and stuff like that made me a better player, if I could say that. From the first day uh, throughout the entire process, it was just you know foot on the pedal, uh, Chuba finding a new gear, and you know it was just all gas, no brakes throughout the entire process. It was him 
becoming more mature and just developing into, you know, almost a, a, a professional, you know, to put it that way. But watching his progression, you know, obviously physically, yes, but mentally as well, um, has truly made him the player that he is right now. And watching him play and seeing the, you know, culmination of all of his hard work is absolutely awesome. And just seeing double-double after double-double is amazing. I could definitely say Joe from the um, rehab place up in Scarsdale, and definitely Tom O'Brien, that's with my hand cards right now. Tom O'Brien and Steve Giorgio, those guys helped me a lot. I mean, I expressed to them, I know I was supposed to rehab like probably like three times a week, but I expressed to them I wanted to go every day, double days, double two times a day and stuff like that. And those guys who were open arms, they helped me, they pushed me. It kept me motivated to get to where I want to be, which, which helped a lot. Watch him progress from, you know, some of our key performance indicators, right? So we chose split squats, we chose some isometric movements, we also chose a glute bridge. Specifically on the glute bridge, to watch him progress from struggling to lift, you know, 135 pounds five times to doing sets with 500 pounds on the bar for upwards of eight to 10 reps was just a very rewarding part throughout the process. My journey is my journey. Like I always tell myself that my journey is my journey. I wouldn't want it anywhere else, any, anyone, anywhere else. So, I mean, I mean, it's been, like I said, towards Rocky Road, but it's been great. This last year's been great. It's been, it's been going well. I mean, I'm, this is, I'm feeling healthy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy being back. It sound right, boy. For Kyle Neptune, year one at the helm of the Fordham program has been anything but normal. The Brooklyn native and former Villanova assistant led the Rams to a 7-5 non-conference finish and an 8-10 opening victory over LaSalle, the program's first to open conference play since 2013. COVID cancellations and postponements have sent the schedule into flux, but Neptune and his staff have kept the focus on being a tough and gritty team that plays together. Here's Kyle Neptune on the non-conference schedule, his team continuing to grow and laying the foundation for the program. I think our out-of-conference schedule is very challenging for us. Um, and you know, as a new team, a new program, a bunch of new guys on the uh, coming together for a first time, um, it was really challenging. Um, just because you know a lot of different personalities, guys were getting to know each other's games, and as coaches, we we're getting to know their games. Um, so I think it was a very valuable experience being together, um, especially down in Florida um, for those four or five days we were down there, kind of locked in together, um, and then going through a, a schedule where we had a lot of games that were jam-packed, really close together. Uh, I think there was times in the early part of the season where we played the most games in the country. Um, so that was a lot of uh, exper valuable experience for our team. We learned a lot about ourselves. Um, you know, we got a lot of great experiences like going to the Barclays um, and, and playing here in front of a, a great crowd, especially for our first home game um, against Columbia. So I, I think all in all, it was a, a great non-conference schedule, uh, you know, and a great non-conference performance from our team. We're really uh, happy where we are now, and we're really looking to continue to uh, continue it in league play. Yeah, I think with eight ten play starting, um, it, we really try to look at it as the same as any other game. Every game we go into, um, we, we look at it as our Super Bowl. So, you know, we, we only get a couple of these, you know, a little bit over 30 games a year. We work all year round. So to say one game is any important or less important than the other it would be insane in our book. So we, we look at every game like it's our Super Bowl. We want to win every game. We want to play out. We want to play harder than the uh, opponent every game, no matter what. For, for our program, we really want to uh, be a team that identif identity is to defend and rebound every game and play harder than our opponent every game, no matter what. Um, I, I think that our team in particular, uh, you know, it has is uncanny 
um, just being around each other, how much they like each other. Uh, I think that really resonates in the, in the, on the court because they play for each other. Um, they, they're constantly picking each other up and they challenge each other. Um, so I, I think our team is really unique because um, we have a lot of older guys. Like, you know, the guys haven't really played together as much, but we have a lot of older guys who have been there and been in tough moments um, and have, kind of have a lot of wily veterans. So um, we're really, again, we're really proud about where we are. Uh, I think we, we're, we're only scratching the surface. I think we can get way better. Continue to get more organized, um, continue to get, especially on the offensive end. Um, I think we, if we continue to play hard defensively um, and continue to take pride on the defensive end and take pride in playing harder than the other team and then uh, continue to get organized offensively, we'll be in a great spot. The excitement surrounding Fordham basketball has not been limited to the court this season. Fordham fans and alumni have found a new energy in Kyle Neptune's first season. One of those alums happens to be Brooklyn Nets radio voice Chris Carino, a 1992 Fordham graduate. Coach Neptune turned things around to interview Chris, chatting about his New York roots, what the Fordham experience has meant to his career, and the passion of Fordham basketball fans and alumni. Well, uh, hello, uh, Fordham faithful, here with uh, Chris Carino, um, the voice with the Nets. Um, hey, Chris, how you doing? I, I love the tables being turned here. Yeah. They called me over here. I thought I was going to interview you. It turned out you're interviewing me. Oh, we got you today. Oh, we got you today. Awesome. All right. Hopefully no, hopefully no really tough questions. No, no, no. A couple softballs for you. So, obviously, everyone knows you're the voice of the Nets. Could you just expand on some of the other, uh, obviously you've had a storybook career, some of the other things you've been involved with. You know, I've been really fortunate though. I, I, I chose Fordham because it was in New York City. I mean, I'm, I'm a New Yorker, I grew up in Yonkers, and my dad gave me the best advice. He said, where do you want to work when you get out of school? I said, I want to be in New York. He goes, then why are you going to go to Massachusetts or Indiana? Go right in the city. And I went to Fordham. And I have been so lucky that I've never had to leave New York. You know, I got a, I got a part time job with the Nets right out of school. I was interning for the Giants when I was in college. No way. Um, so everything Chris, I do I'm now. I'm going to write this stuff down because I'm going to share this with recruits moving forward. Just so you know. Yeah. I didn't interrupt, but just so you know. You know, it, so it, it all, I mean, there, there are a couple ways you can go. When you get out of school, you could go someplace if you feel you need the reps and you want to get better or you try and make your connections here in New York if you want to be here. And this is the number one media market in the country. And this is where I wanted to be. So I stayed and I worked behind the scenes for many years. Uh, but I've been getting a paycheck from the Nets in some form, part-time or full-time, going back to my first year out of Fordham in 1992. So that's how far it goes back. Um, you know, then it slowly work your way up. You know, you, if, if you're a player of the year, in the Atlantic 10, you probably get drafted into the NBA. I won an award my senior year of, of college as the top broadcaster in the tri-state area by Madison Square Garden. And I got to do a Nick game when I was still a senior at Fordham. That's amazing. And nobody drafted me first round though. You know, you go to the, in this business, you go to the end of the line. And it took me another six years of working behind the scenes before I got to do play-by-play -play for an NBA game. And then, uh, you know, and it just, it takes off from there, but it's a grind, it's hard, but I, you know, Fordham was absolutely the greatest decision that I made in my life. And it's everything to do with where I am right now. That's amazing. I, and I want to get into Fordham in one second. Uh, before that, I want to ask you, what would you say was the biggest moment um, that you've covered so far uh, in your in your storybook career? Yeah, you know, it's what's amazing, you know, as we tape this, I, I did a memorable Nets game uh, the night before where they played with uh, eight players in uniform and they rallied to win this game. And it was one of those games I'll remember for a long time. I, I you know, I go back to remember some duels that you know, Jason Kidd and Steve Nash having a great duel in double overtime at, at Izod Center. And I'll remember that for the rest of my life. And some playoff games I'll remember forever. Um, what's great about the job is you show up to the arena or the stadium 
and you have no idea that you may see something you've never seen before. You may have a moment that everyone in that arena or fans of those teams will remember the rest of their life. There's so many games you do that you forget when you leave the arena, but, uh, but you have those moments. So there have been so many. You know, it's funny, I'll, I'll, I'll usually throw away my press credential at the end of a game. I know people save them all the time, but if you have like a, a one gamer, I'll throw it away. But when something special happens, I write on back what it was, and I'll keep it. And I go back and I look through them, and I have all these unbelievable games. And I saw, Mike, I was courtside when Michael Jordan scored 40 at 40 years old as a Washington Wizard. You know, there you go, that's one of those, right? You know, NBA Finals games I've done. Uh, NFL games I've done, where I've done some amazing comebacks and exciting finishes. Um, you know, even just being a fan of the New York Giants as a kid, I got to do their preseason games, and then I got to do a regular season game on Thanksgiving one time. So here I am doing a Thanksgiving Giants game in the regular season. So all those things, I, I don't have one moment where I could say this singles out as the greatest in my broadcasting career. There certainly have been, I mean, I can go through a bunch of them, but just the opportunities that I've gotten in all these games that have added up in 20 some odd years of broadcasting has just been really special. That's amazing, that's amazing. I wanted to take you back couple years ago, not too far ago, when you were in college, not too, not too, not too it's, long it's, ago. It's more than I might want to admit. But all yeah. right, all right, and I want to just put you back into college, you, and just talk to me about what life was like back, uh, back then for you, just going through college at Fordham. Well, I'll tell you this first, Kyle, is I know the Rose Hill gym sometimes, uh, people think it, you need some big facility or some play in some major arena. When those four years I was at Fordham, I cherished every day that I got to work in the Rose Hill gym. And that place was packed. I want to see the students pack that place again because I remember how warm it would get in there and how loud it would get in there and how intimidating it was, especially when you got a good team. And we had a good team in the late 80s and early 90s. I'm telling you, it, you could have been, it was like being in Cameron Indoor, you know? And I think it can be that again. So I'll just say that right off the bat. But you know, um, I was a commuter at Fordham. Lived about a half hour away, I commuted to school. So a lot of my free time was spent at basketball practice. You know, Nick McCarchick was like a professor to me. He would actually come over sometimes to me. He'd see me watching practice, he'd, he'd invited us always to watch practice, and he would come over and and he would just explain things. This is why we're doing this. This is why we did this in the last game. And it was a great lesson I learned because he would always say, I don't mind if you criticize us on the air, as long as I see you coming to practice and you speak to me and you know what we're trying to do. Because if what you say on the air, it's probably right. You know, you know what we're trying to do. So if you're critical, we probably deserve it. So he didn't mind that. And so I spent a lot of time doing that spent a lot of time at WFUV. Since I lived in the area, I did shifts all summer at WFUV. So I was always around. It was either the radio station or my schoolwork. And the, it's funny because now my sophomore year, I think it was my sophomore year, yeah. They had a really good team. And I was a sophomore and I was doing all the men's games, top men's games. So we go to the MAC tournament that year. And we were a five seed. Thought we were gonna be one and done, maybe a game. I'd be, I'd be back in time for my fi I had finals the next week. Well, we make a run all the way to the MAC final against LaSalle when they had Lionel Simmons, Doug Overton, Randy Wood. You know, like they, was, they, were, they were a top 20 team. And I had to miss all my mid or my final, or like I had big test midterms or something. Frank McLaughlin, the AD, had to talk to my professors because we were now stuck. I was gonna miss midterms. I had the lowest GPA I'd have in four years that, <laughs> that, that semester at Fordham because I kind of blew off all these study courses and everything because we were in the middle of it. It was the MAC tournament. Come on, we had a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, so that was memorable to me, but just a little glimpse of what it was like trying to balance being a student and, and being a broadcaster. That's amazing, that's amazing. And one of the things that uh, has really, really touched me is that every time I go to an event, and I meet someone from Fordham, how passionate they are about the program. 
Um, what would you say it is about Fordham University that just has this such a passionate base? And, and take out sports, it's just there's such a pride about being from Fordham and being have went to Fordham University. Can you explain that? That you have the you know, Google worldview, right? You, you, you get the, the, the view of the whole world and then you zoom in and you keep zooming in. You know, I grew up in New Yorker. I grew up, my, my dad, you know, worked in Washington Heights and I worked with him since I was a, a little kid, you know, and, in, in his liquor store. And then, you know, I, I was from Yonkers and I always had jobs in Manhattan and always taking the train and the subway. And you're a New Yorker, you know, so, and, and, and any New Yorker that you know, and you're a Brooklyn guy and now it's even, even more central. My, I married a Brooklyn girl. There we go. And I know that when you're from Brooklyn, you're always from Brooklyn. Yes. So there's this immense pride yeah. in being a New Yorker. Yes. And now, as a New Yorker, I can't speak for everybody else, but now I chose the New York City school. Yeah. And now it's even a, even a, it's like, you know, you're from Brooklyn and you're proud to be in Brooklyn. Now I'm from Fordham now. I'm a New Yorker and I went to Fordham, New York City. This is our school. Yeah, this is our cool. Jesuit University. Yeah. This is our beautiful campus that looks like you're walking around a New England, but you're in the Bronx. You know, I know what it's like to get on the D train and go over to Yankee Stadium, right? So I know what it's like to jump on Metro North and go to the city and cover a game at the Garden. So there, I think that it's that New York pride that it becomes that Fordham pride, and then it's not the big school where it's overwhelming. You know everybody at Fordham. You know the faculty, you know the staff. They're looking out for you. It really becomes a family. Not just in name that, oh, you meet someone, oh, you went to Fordham. No, you know those people. And then they all had a shared experience. So if you went to a bigger school, a lot of times you may have an alumni network. Their experience may have been vastly different than yours. Whereas at Fordham, I feel like, that alumni network, we all pretty much went through all the same things. We walked the same halls, you know, and uh, we knew a lot of the same professors and the same staff. And, and I think it's that subset with New York City that really makes it, it, it proud to say that you're from Florida. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, um, really appreciate you doing this and taking some time out and sharing your, your story. Um, obviously, uh, you're someone that you know. I know our guys look up to, uh, being in the statue, you're doing, doing what you've done in the in the in the manner you've done it. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time out. and Look forward to getting to know you over Thank time. You. Thank you. Now you got to get your staff to recruit my son. All right, there we go. We will. Yeah, because he's he's in a little fight right now between Syracuse and Florida. We got to show him what's up. All right, we oh, we we got to beat them. So we'll <laughs> we'll be on. Them. We'll be on. Them. Thanks. Looking Thanks, forward man. to it. This has been an inside look at Fordham basketball presented by TD Bank. For updates on Fordham men's basketball and all Fordham athletics, follow at Fordham Rams on Twitter. Until next time, I'm your host, Nick DeLuca.